Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I thought I'd do something a little bit different. I'm going to be reading some like little like bedtime stories or stories for you guys. Um, so I picked a story from Old uh, Grimm's Fairy Tales, which these are extremely hard to read, a lot of them. A lot of them are like Old English, so bear with me. <laughs> these are extremely hard to read. But these are so much fun. I love these stories because there's always like a different twist at the end of them. So the one I chose today was Rumpelstiltskin, so we'll read that one first. So sit back, you guys relax while I read you the story, um, and I hope you guys enjoy it. So let's start. Okay, Rumpelstiltskin. There once was a miller who was poor, but who had a beautiful daughter. Now it happened that he had to go and speak to the king, and in order to make himself appear important to him, he said, I have a daughter who can spin straw into gold. The king said to the miller, This is an art which pleases me well. If your daughter is as clever as you say, bring her tomorrow to my place, and I will try what I can do. And when the girl was brought to him, he took her into a room which was quite full of straw, gave her a spinning wheel and a reel, and said, Now, set to work. And if by tomorrow morning early you have not spun the straw into gold during the night, you must die. Thereupon himself locked up in the room and left her in it alone. It's almost like cra these are crazy, crazy stories, you guys. <laughs> so there sat the poor miller's daughter, and for the life of her could not tell what to do. She had no idea how straw could be spun into gold, and she grew more and more miserable, until at last she began to weep. But all at once the door opened and came in a little man and said, Good evening, Mistress Miller. Why are you crying so? Alas, answered the girl, I have to spin straw into gold and I do not know how to do it. What do you give me, said the minikin, if I do it for you? My necklace, said the girl. The little man took the necklace, seated himself in front of the wheel, and whirr, 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 three times. And then the wheel was full. Then he put another on, and whirr, 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 three times around, and the second one full too. And so it went on until the morning, and when all the straw was spun and all the reels were full of gold, by daybreak the king was already there. And when he saw the gold, he was astonished and delighted, but his heart became only more greedy. He had the miller's daughter taken into another room full of straw, which was much larger, and commanded her to spin that also in the night if she valued her life. The girl knew how to help herself and was crying. And when the door opened again and the little man appeared and said, What will you give me if I spin that straw into gold for you? The ring on my finger, answered the girl. The little man took the ring and began to turn the wheel and by morning had spun all the straw into glittering gold. The king rejoiced beyond measure in sight, but still he had not gold enough. And he had the miller's daughter taken into a still larger room full of straw and said, You must spin this too in the course of this night, but if you succeed, you shall be my wife. Even if she be a miller's daughter, he thought, I cannot find a richer wife in this whole world. Then the girl was alone and Manikin came again for the third time and said, What will you give me if I spin this straw for you this time also? I have nothing left to give, answered the girl. Then promise me if you should become queen, your first child. Who knows whether that will ever happen, thought the miller's daughter. And not knowing how else to help herself in this strait, she promised the minikin what he wanted, and for that once more spun the straw into gold. And when the king came in the morning and found all that he had wished, he took her in marriage, and the pretty miller's daughter became a queen. A year after, she had a beautiful child, and she never gave a second thought to the minikin. But suddenly, he came into her room and said, Now give me what you promised. The queen was horror-struck and offered the minikin all the riches of the kingdom that he could leave her her child. But the minikin said, No, something that is living is dearer to me than all the treasures in the world. Then the queen began to weep and cry, so the minikin pitied her. I will give you three days time, he said. If by that time you find out my name, then you shall keep your child. So the queen thought the whole night of all the names that she had ever heard, and she sent a messenger over to the country to inquire, far and wide for any other names that there might be. 
Then the minikin came the next day. She began with Casper, Melikor, Bal Balitzar, and said all the names that she knew, one after another. But to every one, the little man said, that is not my name. On the second day, she had inquiries made in the neighborhood as to the names of the people there. She had repeated to the minikin the most uncommon and curious. Perhaps your name is short ribs or sheep shanks or lace leg but always answered that is not my name on the third day the messenger came back and said i have not been able to find a single new name but as i came to a high mountain at the end of the forest where the fox and the hare bid each other good night there i saw a little house and before the house a fire was burning and round about the fire, a quite ridiculous little man was jumping. He hopped onto the one leg and shouted, Today I bake, tomorrow brew, the next day I'll have the young queen's child. Ha! I'm glad that no one knew that rumpled stiltskin I am styled. You may think how glad the queen was when she heard that name. And soon afterwards, the little man came in and asked, Now, Mistress Queen, what is my name? At first she said, Is your name Conrad? No. Is your name Harry? No. Perhaps your name is Rumpled Stiltskin. The devil has told you that, cried the little man. In his anger, he plunged his right foot so deep into the earth that his whole leg went in. And then in rage, he pulled at his left leg so hard with both hands that he tore himself in two. Oh my gosh. These stories are so crazy. Yeah, these like grim fairy tale stories, like there's always a twist in them that's like kind of creepy at the end, so... Anyway, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed that story. Um, if you guys like the stories, make sure you give me a thumbs up. If you guys want to hear more, comment down below. If you guys want to hear any other stories, I will read them for you. This is super fun. Um, something a little bit different. So make sure you like and subscribe. And I hope you guys have an awesome day. And I will see you guys next time.